What's up guys? It's Brennan here at Brotherhood Finance. Today's video, we are going to be talking about something that needs to be addressed, and that is the economic collapse of China. Today we're going to be diving in how this could really affect the current markets, not only the markets in China, but how they are all interconnected and how this could affect the U.S. as well. There's been crazy things that have been occurring in the real estate market in the U.S. It's already starting to slump, which we have called many months ago here at Brotherhood Finance. Again, we are back to uploading. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's dive into this right now, brothers. Now, first up, as China verges on becoming the premier global economy, how do U.S. businesses survive? And again, this isn't the worst problem. The other problem is that you have not yet gone down below and smashed that thumbs up button or left a comment down below. We're going to be putting out a consistent amount of content here every single week, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Brotherhood Finance is back, and let's dive into this again. Now, what else? Principles for dealing with the changing world order. As you know, you know, there's really been a fight recently for the world reserve currency. The dollar has held that up, but with a massive amount of money printing, China is trying to overtake that, as we already know. Now, why is this imperative, and how is this affecting not only the U.S., but also China? U.S. imports from China account for 21.2% of overall U.S. imports. Now, again, I know I'm just a guy on YouTube, but what I did is I broke everything down and I did, you know, extensive research on this topic and why I believe not over is Evergrande going to collapse, but I believe the whole real estate market in China could possibly collapse and this could cause dramatic effects in the U.S. as well. Now, again, this starts with two words, and that is real estate. First up, the housing bubble. As you can see in this slide right here, Chinese housing market, the big slowdown is starting to occur with monthly year-over-year -year price increases for new residential buildings in China's 70 major cities starting to decline. If you can see, this is the construction here that has occurred in China. Pretty much what happened is they built a whole bunch and manufactured a lot of new development and buildings in the area. However, with supply and demand, they oversupplied and the demand wasn't there. And a lot of the banking also didn't back this as well with people taking out loans that actually weren't backed by anything there was no interest rates and they're pretty much just giving all these companies money hand over fist to build this development now if you look right here this is a map of some of the main you know cities and areas in china and a lot of these areas that are being built are not occupied now, how quickly really is the China economy and atmosphere building homes and real estate? The country is building about five times as many houses as America and Europe combined, which is substantial. When you take that into effect, that is a substantial amount of real estate being built. And is it really going to be occupied? And if it's not, how could this dramatically affect the U.S.? Since supply was so limited, the several cities use you know, a lot of lotteries to allocate them, some with odds as low as one in 60. China stores 70% of its wealth in real estate. Now the property crisis is forcing investors to reconsider their favorite means of saving. And the big problem, the big, big problem with this is that a majority of household wealth is stored actually in real estate in China given the stats that I just gave you and that, you know, it's so hard to come across the home, but then they overdeveloped now. The housing wealth is, start, is settling new records for both owners and sellers, not only in the U.S. And China's housing pre-sales model needs fixing as many projects go unfinished. If you look right here, the price to income ratio in cities like Beijing and Shanghai is around 23, meaning the average household would have to work for more than two decades without spending to buy a home. In Tokyo, New York, that ratio is much lower at about 13. That just shows you how expensive it really is to buy in Beijing and Shanghai. And that is really, you know, one of the main causes of why this occurred. If you look at this, you know, it shows the vacancy that has occurred in China. Now, these stats are from 2017, but it was 22.4% vacancy in 2017. Now, is China's government getting involved? They said that they're going to offer some help to batter the real estate sector, which is desperate need of reform as we prior stated and shown. And these constructions and all this stuff that's occurring is starting to, you know, really collapse and fall apart before our eyes. It's been addressed on many news channels in the U.S. We talked about Evergrande and how 
they're trying to bail that out. But the problem is, is these governments and these corporations think that solving the problem is by printing an excess amount of money. And as we know, that doesn't solve the problem. It makes it worse, much like what is happening in the U.S. right now with all the liquidity and capital and money that was printed to get us out of this bubble. Again, we are in a recession, and I think one big major hit like this could be the downfall and the start of the collapse. Now this right here is an illustration of what occurred. You can see that you know there's you know construction workers that are pretty much getting fed money hand over fist, and what they're doing is they're building and starting these projects but not finishing them. And since they have unlimited capital to work with, they just keep building, and it's almost like fraud at a certain extent. As you can see here, pre-sales and deposits were developers' biggest funding sources in both 2019 and 2020. And the National Bureau of Statistics accounting for more than twice that money that they raised from bank loans, while bank loans and bonds usually have an annual interest rate of at least 5%. And capital raised in from pre-sales is entirely interest free. This is the big problem, brothers. The problem is that they don't have any interest and the capital is entirely interest free, which give these construction workers and these developers initiative just to keep building because they're being fed money hand over fist, but the buildings and the real estate is not being occupied, which should have dramatic effects on the real estate market when most of the wealth in China is stored in the housing market. Now, if you look right here, you can see the scheduled delivery in the million square meters um, you know, in the China area and what's expected to be delivered and whatnot and what they are unknown about. But 225 million square meters of unfinished homes, that is how big of an impact this is. That is how substantial it is. Now, again, I told you there was protests and things that were occurring. This is kind of just the start of it, um, you know, the, bo the boycott and what is happening in the area. And as I've already addressed priorly, I talked about Evergrande and how Chinese realtors' $300 billion debt problem needs to be solved. And it's not only Evergrande. It's a lot of these other developers and real estate buildings and areas that have also been built that are not being occupied, that are being fed money, that are you know pretty much serving no purpose, that could be knocked down, that could start a collapse, that could trickle into the U.S. Now what is happening? Homeowners are cutting and pasting from it to draft their own boycott. Within four weeks, more than 320 projects in about 100 cities were facing similar protests, uh, roiling markets, and forcing authorities to quarrel banks and developers to defuse the unrest. That also happened in China. These people are getting mad about what's happening in the real estate market, and not only that, but what's happening with their banking. The banking in China has been you know, somewhat untrustworthy recently, and that's only causing more to the problem. Now, if you see here, the slump in the housing market sales and property developments has been happening not only in the US, but China as well. And again, if you go back and watch our other videos on why I believe the real estate market's going to crash and it's only beginning, go and check that out. It usually takes about 1.5 years after the stock market bottoms for the real estate market to bottom. And look at this, this is the credit boom. Credit's very important to look at. You can look at the mortgage loans and developer loans on this slide. As you see right here, the re this red pink line, this is the developer loans and this is the mortgage loans in the yuan at 40 trillion yuan. Quite substantial, quite a big bubble, quite a problem I'm seeing. The Federal Reserve already warned in the U.S. that China's commercial real estate sector could spread to the U.S. if it deteriorates dramatically as investors' focus turns to China Evergrande Group. This is having China tighten the property proceeds as the Fed sees, but how much are they really tightening things? We're still seeing protests, we're still seeing problems with the banking, and we're still seeing real estate development being built that's not being filled. That could cause major collapse problems in China. And since it accounts for 22.2% of imports and revenue for the US, this could be a big problem. Now, going back to what I was talking about with the banks, um, you know, there's been protests due to freezing of funds um, and, you know, just a lot of things that are really occurring that are adding to this problem. Now, this goes to point number two, which is the crashing economy. As many as 400,000 customers across China were unable to access their savings at the rural banks and many other places in China. 
and this is just the you know the tip of the iceberg that's a drop in the ocean of china's vast banking system but about a quarter of the industry's total assets are held by 4000 small lenders which means that you know this could cause dramatic effects because if they're small lenders they don't have a lot of capital which means they're going to have to sell property quickly if it doesn't become filled and if there is a crash not only from Evergrande but from these other real estate developers which could cause a big sharp economic slowdown as stated but if the government's investigation finds that these cases involve non-compliant transactions people could lose everything this problem is much bigger than I, you know anyone could really anticipate when you really start diving into the data and the facts and i think this is very scary given the current economic atmosphere we are currently in and i'm already very you know worried about the economy as i believe we are in a recession and things are going to get much worse people see you know that the, the markets have been bouncing back recently but as ray dalio and other people like michael burry state i think it's just a dead cat bounce i see still see things going down sharp dramatically i don't think we're anywhere near a bottom and i think there'll be a lot of opportunities present here in the next coming months and next coming years now, again, we've already addressed broken banking. We've talked about how Chinese economy could be dragged down by less of convenience in the property sector. For the government, the priority is to break the negative feedback loop that features the high leverage ratio and liquidity crunch on the part of the developers, which is you know, being stated by the chief economist for you know, Greater China. China plans this, you know, how are they going to really respond? They said that they're going to, you know, give up $44 billion worth of distress to the real estate sector. But is that really going to help the problem or is that adding more fuel to the fire? Now, if you look right here, the direct investment position in the United States and China from 2000, 2001, 2021, we have been investing more in China. But you have to also remember that, you know, Wall Street and a lot of these other banks are also invested in many companies in China, not only the real estate market, but also in many sectors in, you know, the investment portfolio. China is in distress, nevertheless. The economy is suffering rapidly, slowdowns, and there is a lot of systematic problems, not only on the surface, but in the banking, but in the amount of imports, all of that stuff. Next up is there is every indication that China will fall short of meeting its annual economic growth target of 5.5%. What you're starting to realize very quickly, I think, is that you know the days of China's meteorotic economic, economic rise are long past. Now, I don't know how true that is, but again, it's very imperative to keep in mind that there will probably be more slowdown in the U.S. There will probably be more slowdown in China. This Evergrande and this real estate problem with the developers and a large amount of the wealth for Chinese residents being stored in real estate is quite a significant problem. Make sure you leave me your opinions down below. Make sure to smash that thumbs up button if you've not already done so. That is even a bigger problem if you've not done that. I appreciate you stopping by Brotherhood Finance. Make sure to check us out at brotherhoodfinance.com. We're on TikTok, we're on Instagram. Check us out, we have a whole bunch of products to help you out. I hope you found value in this video. Also, leave a comment down below. What do you want to see me address? Do you want me to address cryptocurrency again, the stock market, real estate? I can address it all. Let me down, down below. Thanks again. This is Brendan. Have a great rest of your day, a great rest of your weekend. Peace, brothers.